I'm not big for you. Mm -hmm. I'm big for me. Wow, like, um, because I really thought I was on my way. Only you can stop you. Go for it. Hi, and welcome back to Inspired Living TV. I'm Carrie Murphy, and if you are looking for love, then you are going to love today's episode. For over 17 years, my guest has been known and recognized as the elite matchmaker and dating coach to some of the country's most influential and marriage-minded men. And it's because of this, she has helped women bridge the gap between wanting love and actually finding it. She's helped the sexes come together and has helped arrange over thousands, yes, I said thousands of marriages. Dr. Phil calls her the best of the best, and she absolutely is, and she's with us today. Please welcome Miss Wonderful April Byer. Hello. Hello, honey. So Hi. good to see you. Great to see you, Carrie. All right, so we're talking about love. My favorite subject. I thought it would be. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems to me that it's harder than ever to like find it, like to find true love. It just kind of seems kind of elusive to a lot of people that I talk to. Mm. Maybe it's because so many of them are entrepreneurs. But do you see that? Do you feel that? Absolutely. You know, 17 years ago, all of this felt simpler and easier. Uh, even back when I started, it was older people that were coming to us. It was somebody who had been married for 25, 35 years mm -hmm. and maybe coming back around for their second marriage. And now it's young people. It's men and women in their late 20s and early and mid-late 30s coming to me and saying, I can't do this on my own. I need you. Why is it so hard? Honestly, I think it's because ambition has replaced intuition is wow. what it is. Oh, that's a good one. Ambition has placed intuition. In what way? More and more people are successful. There's more and more women starting businesses like you and I have. Mm -hmm. And I think we're working so long, we're in our head all day long, that some of the answers that should just be so simple and easy for us to uncover are harder to find and hold on to because we're just not spending that much time of our day reflecting on these things. Mm -hmm. We don't sit around during the day and reflect on what do I need? Um, what makes me lovable? Mm -hmm. uh, what are the things that I feel would be beneficial to me to take me through my 30s, 40s, 50s, and beyond? Right. It's a, it's a really difficult time. I'm busier than ever in my company right now. I, I, th I think that's a common theme. I mean, I yeah. know for me too, it is just crazy sometimes trying to juggle it all. And I think for a lot of professionals too, they wonder, how do I juggle love too when it comes to being ambitious and having true love, do you think that they have to make a choice? I don't think people have to make a choice. I just, I just think that, especially for women, there's a s certain kind of attitude that carries into your day that you must, or you, that you think you need to have in order mm -hmm. to get ahead. Mm -hmm. And that bleeds into the dating part of your life. It's, it's for sure gonna be there. And there's just so much misinformation out there. There's so many books and magazines telling women to do one thing yeah. that is completely, opposite of their natural intuition and their femininity and they're coming into my office or my coaching sessions and they're so not confused. working it's not working. well it's because it's all it's all things that are asking them to to go against their true nature let's talk about that that's yeah. really good so we have like the conventional rules like wait three days oh. right um go dutch on a first date you know don't let that him, <laughs> I, I don't know don't let him pick you up meet him there like mm. all of these rules when it comes to dating and you try to help them see through those. Do you think that's true? Like, do we wait three days? Do There's we? No such thing. Do we call? Do they call? <laughs> if, if it were you and I, and you and I had said, hey, let's get together and have dinner, we wouldn't worry about who called who. Oh, I would wait three days. Would you? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you are so hard to get. That's what I love about you. Well, you know. No, I'm just very interested. Um, we wouldn't wait. Right. And if you took me to dinner tonight, I would call you tomorrow and I would thank you or I would send you a little note. Why is it different when a man does it? That's such a good point. Why, Why is, is it different? different? It's not. Yeah. People are people. And when it comes for the time of relationship readiness, we're all the same. Mm -hmm. There's that famous quote that says, whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, men are no different than us when it comes to that time of, I want to give and receive love. Everybody's just as anxious, just as nervous, just as afraid to reveal and share. If you can, if you can meet a man with your heart instead of your head, you're going to be five miles mm -hmm. ahead of everybody else that's trying to meet him and date him. And for men that I work with that are coming to me with not only a financial investment, but this is 
this is a huge emotional investment to work with me. Sure. They got to kind of put their soul on the table. They've and that's gotta be hard for a lot of men to do. Really, really tough, yeah. especially when you're considering these are like the top three, five percent of the men in the nation that are very type A and that are used to getting what they want. Right. And when they say jump, everybody says how Whoa, high. Yeah. <laughs> and they have to come to me and they have to be humble and they have to be open and they have to be vulnerable with me and they have to be candid with me. And the things that I've heard over 17 years would just absolutely blow your mind. Okay, and there is a book, right? At some There's point. There's a book coming. <laughs> At some I'm point. I'm working on it. I'm like, I'm ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. Because honestly, I wanted to write for women because I work with men. And so I have the ear and the eyes of these guys all day. I'm in their living rooms. And... Um, they're sharing with me and they're uh, revealing really private things to me that I think if women could just know this and yeah, hear this. Be a little fly on the be wall. Be a little fly on the yeah. wall. <laughs> everybody would start losing some of the attitude and losing some of that fear mm -hmm. because dating is just relating. It's it's like breathing in air and breathing it out. It's not a skill set mm -hmm. that you need to adopt or create. It's actually just being more of who you really are. But there's so much advice out there that says, don't do this, don't do this. Uh, I was just with a woman yesterday who said, I love to give and I love to bake and I, and I have all these wonderful events to go to. But my friends criticized me for inviting the man I was dating to some of these things because it needed to come from him. Mm. And all I can say is the men that I work with, if you're not showing up as somebody who is caring and nurturing and ready to reveal and share within the first, I would say, two to three dates, as beautiful as you are, as sexy as you are, as intelligent as you are, it's not going past that. They wow. lose interest if there's not that profound emotional connection. Hmm. They're not going to sit around and wait for something to develop two to four weeks from now. And I think the ladies wait too. And there's that, probably that little bit of vulnerability that both need to come to the table with in yes. order just like when we sit down, like I share my heart with yeah. you and vice versa. And, and yet I think when it comes to dating, especially in this neck of the woods, but I would say anywhere mm -hmm. that they're like, I have to show up a certain way and, you know, and I can't share a lot of things and I'm going to keep it very surface. Do you find that actually being vulnerable early is helpful or does that or not? Well, it, it is vulnerability. It's the only way. The problem is, is that everyone thinks that if you're vulnerable, that means that you are opening yourself to harm right? Mm -hmm. Vulnerability is just your truth at its highest level. It's just mm -hmm. your ability to be really transparent. So if my truth uh, puts me in harm's way, then I'm with the wrong person, then I've cast the net in the That's wrong direction. Yeah. Um, so there's no such thing as, oh my gosh, I'm vulnerable, therefore I'm going to get hurt. Right. It's usually the choice. I call it the diving board. If you haven't been smart and used your head and not chosen well, then yeah, you're casting your pearls before swine, right? right yeah, like you are you are giving of yourself in the wrong environment. You are shopping in the wrong store. So when you I are shopping in the wrong you are. Store. So like when it. I teach smart, sexy, soulful, it, there's a reason for that. I have to give women that really good, solid, head smart kind of good dating skills. Then we develop the the flirtation and then the soul connection and the vulnerability because you have to know who you're looking for in order to be that person. Okay, let's talk about that. So do we list? Or do we not list? Do we list? Do we list? Do we list? Um, you know, it's so funny because when I saw you last, there was a couple of women that found their dream guy and each of them told me about these lists that they had created and right. they literally found him. So I will say that lists are fine as long as they are deep and they are profound and they're rooted in some kind of meaning and they reflect your needs, not your wants. Mm. So more like your core values, what's core important values. to you. Not like I want the car and the house. He's got to be a doctor and he's right. got to be 6'2". Right. And he has to have a British accent right. and he has to read the Wall Street <laughs> Journal. Those are wants, right? right? But if you Those talk about- Those are very about, surface. Very, very yeah. surface. Ask for surface, you're going to get surface yeah. back, right? Very true. So, yeah. you know, manifesting is really big. I just don't want anybody to limit themselves. As a matchmaker, I want to make matches all day long, but I stop myself because I think, well, she wouldn't find him attractive. It, he's not her typical type. And I want to push people past their comfort zones and get mm -hmm. them to try something different, right? Yeah. So you have to first be open and let go of any of your preconceived ideas of who you thought you should be with. Mm -hmm. Because relationships are based in alchemy. It's not about similarities. We don't have to be together because we're a reflection of each other. 
We're different and that's why we're a great team. You know, would you start a company with somebody who had your exact same strengths? No. 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 Right? <laughs> no. So you don't want to be married to somebody who has your exact same strengths oh, either. Such a great point, April. Yeah. Such good information. Somebody's got to be the VP. That's right. For sure. Mm. So you find this love, <laughs> right? And I actually just read a statistic that I was surprised with. 69% of entrepreneurs are married when they start their business. Mm. And yet there's such a struggle. Like we were just talking about ambition versus intimacy of... How do you, how do you, once you find it and you are driven and you are ambitious, how do you keep that relationship solid and going when you're trying to build an empire or yeah. build your dream? It's hard because if you were in a different field uh, before you started your business and you chose that person a decade ago, two decades ago, when say you weren't empowered mm -hmm. and busy, mm -hmm. it's quite possible that your relationship is going to run out of track too. Very few people can choose going forward. Most people choose for the moment, for the now, the feeling that they have. Right. Very few people know how to see into the future and see into their career, right? What's mm -hmm. going to happen in the future? Could this person grow with me? Could this person support me in my endeavors? That's really hard. So you have to look at your relationship and what drew you together in the first place, right? right? Did he love the fact that you were entrepreneurial? Did he love the fact that you had all these brilliant ideas? Does he support you? Um, does he have narcissistic qualities? If he does, good luck. Right, starting that's that, gonna be pretty tough. Starting that business because he's gonna want all of that attention. There's a new baby in the room. Yeah, yeah. there's a new baby. And yeah. we all know, all of us that have businesses, it's a baby. It is. You know, I've had my company since- Goes into since... toddler and all yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what my business is. I know, it's an adolescent at this yeah. point. Yeah. But everybody thinks if I could just get my business off the ground, everything will be fine. Right. I started my business in 2003 I'm still working day and night on my baby. Right. You know, it needs my constant attention and my care. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a long time after that first inception, that first day. I happened to meet my husband um, after I had already started my company. So I was naturally attracting somebody who kind of was a cheerleader. Right. right? He yeah. wanted to see me succeed. Yeah, which is a so, great quality. Yeah, but again, that's not something that a lot of successful women think about. They think that they should meet somebody toe to toe. Mm -hmm. Well, he better be far more successful than I am and far more dynamic than I am. And I want to be able to respect him, April. But we have to look at what is respect. Do you respect somebody because he makes more money? Or do you respect somebody because of who he is in this world and mm -hmm. how he lives his life and how he loves you and your family and your children? So we have to define where are we deriving that feeling of respect for somebody? Yeah. April, we could literally talk for hours. And I know that this is such <laughs> juicy, awesome inspiration and, and food for your soul when it comes to finding and keeping true love. You actually put out an incredible, like very sought after newsletter. How do people get more of April Byer? You can find me at aprilbyer.com. Sign up for the newsletter and you'll also be able to receive my blog, Sparks, to help you out with all kinds of dating and relationship advice. Did you enjoy this interview today? If so, we would love to hear from you. Please post your comments below and ask a question or let us know how you have found and kept true love in your life. And if you want more inspiration, and come on, I know that you do, just head over to inspiredliving.tv and remember to keep dreaming it, living it, and being it. Until next time. thousands of people yeah reading that I know I read it and it is really Thanks. awesome stuff so if you need great the mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> guess try that again <clears throat> stop it stop it stop I'm trying to be serious <sighs> okay all right <clears throat> So sorry. All right, all right, here we go. All right. So April. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Get the giggles.
comes up. I know, right? What are we, 12? Oh my <laughs> lord. Okay. <clears throat> it's a good thing I didn't go to school with you. I know, we'd be those kids in the back. Get them out. All right.